Hello everyone, this is Vicious, and welcome back to more Legend of Zelda in the Ocarina of Time. So in the last episode, we finally got that dreaded water temple out of the way. And now we move on to a mini dungeon. But first we have a little interesting cutscene here. So we're gonna head on back to Kakariko Village. And well, Kakariko Village is not looking too pleasant. Yep, there's fire, smoke. Nobody's here. Ah, but Sheik's over here, standing by the well. Now, of course, we came by the well a few times. We didn't really think too much of it because it's just a well, just there for scenery. But actually, it holds a deep, dark secret. Anyway, that's going to go fly out of the way because why not? Got to make it flashy. What you're going to find out here is that there's something a little more sinister in the well. And it's just going to toss Sheik around like a ragdoll. Now, of course, Link being here that he is, he's going to try his best to defend it. And all we can really see is a shadow. We have no idea what it truly is at the moment. That's because we actually can't see what it is. So Link here is going to be the hero. Try to hold out a shield and sword and... gets wrecked. Yeah. Poor Link could not hold a candle to that beast. Also, the sound effects Link near makes during that scene are a little awkward. Just just throwing that out there. So anyway, we wake up after that uh, beating we took from the dark shadow there. And Sheik here is going to tell us a few interesting things that has to do with that evil shadow. Basically, Impa, which we met a long, long time ago, is uh, the village leader. She, of course, sealed away that evil spirit, and because of Ganon's influence in the world, the evil spirit broke out. So, it went to the Shadow Temple, which is our next temple we have to go to anyway. So, guess who we're going to be fighting? But first, there's a mini dungeon we actually have to do in this episode, which is going to be the focal point of this episode. So, we're going to finish up here. Sheik is going to teach us a song. This will allow us to warp to the Shadow Temple. Now, as I know of, there's no official way to get into the Shadow Temple except for playing the song. I'm not sure if you can actually use the hookshot to grapple yourself up there or anything like that, but you actually need the Nocturne of Shadow to teleport you to the entrance of the Shadow Temple. Because... It is on a platform, and it's blocked off by a wooden gate. So anyway, Sheik here is going to teach us the Nocturne of Shadow. Nocturne of Shadow being the song that warps us to the Shadow Temple. Now, if you haven't got Din's Fire, this will be a good time to go back and get Din Fire, because you're going to need it for this temple. You cannot open the entrance to the temple without it. So now that we have the Nocturne of Shadow, we're going to head back in time. That's right, kids. We're going back to the past. So to get back to the past, we actually have to run back all the way to the Temple of Time. Lovely. Also, make sure that you have the Song of Storms. I think I tried to make sure I actually have the Song of Storm. I might do a little turnaround here real quick. I forgot if I grabbed it or not. Because, like I said, this is a second playthrough of this game because my first playthrough got kind of wrecked up. So I think at this point I'm like, wait, I think I forgot something. Yeah, this is why I noticed I forgot the um, Song of Storms. You actually need the Song of Storms. Without it, you cannot access the mini dungeon. So we're going to head on back over to Kakariko Village, which is all nice and sunny now. It's still raining now. But you know, it's nice and sunny. These two chuckleheads out here laughing it up, like nothing just happened. You know, I hate to tell you, but that building over there was on fire. Had a lot of smokes shooting out of it. Maybe hell? Instead of sitting there like a bunch of idiots, chuckling away? Yeah, good job, guys. So yes, let's meet up with this wonderful man in here. This, of course, is an... Actually, I don't know who he is. But, of course, you whip out your ocarina, and he's going to flip out. 
He says he's remem reminded of that time where a kid came in here and played a song that messed up his windmill. He's going to teach us said song. Good job. So yeah, back in the past, we came in here and played a song that screwed him up. It's lovely. Once you play the Song of Storms here, the windmill will speed up. And, of course, throw everything out of whack. But when, you're, when you do this as a kid, it will drain the well. So this is why you need the Song of Storms. Because you cannot access the well as a kid without it. Now, of course, as an adult, we could access it no matter what, because we have the Zora's tunic and the iron boots. But we don't need that right now. No, forget the iron boots. We're done with them. Now, the funny thing about Inside the Well, which is the mini dungeon we're going to, of course, is that you really don't need to complete it. You just have to get the item, and then you can leave. There's a few extra things you can grab, but we're just going to ignore them for now. Like I said, there's a gold sculpture to grab. There's a few more rooms you can check out, but... We just want the item of the dungeon. So let's head on back over to the destructed Hyrule Town Market. Yes, it's a lovely place. Redeads everywhere. And I thought about cutting out this little part here just of me running back to the Temple of Time, but eh, it's not that far. And it's not much time wasted here. Uh, what a lovely place here. I mean, look at those trees. They're beautiful. Those houses. It's wonderful decor. So, we're just gonna run by these guys. I hate re-deads. Never liked them. I don't know anybody actually liked the re-dead enemies. I'm pretty sure there's a big collective no when it comes to those guys. Now, anyway, when you enter the Temple of Time, if you haven't come back after you've beaten the Forest Temple, there will be a cutscene here where she, where she, where she will teach you, or he will teach you, the pre uh, Prelude of Light. This, of course, will allow you to warp back to the Temple of Time anytime you want. Yes, yeah, so she, he's going to mention, I keep saying she, but he's going to mention that you defeated your first temple and that there's still more sages to rescue, but there will be times where you'll have to go back to the past. And once you put the Master Sword back in the pedestal, you'll reverse time to when you were a kid. Now, this in this game, you really don't use the mechanic of warping back and forth through time as much. It's about two spots in the game that you actually have to do it. Um, other than that, you go back in the past and maybe wrap up a few mini-games, like the Mask Quest, or collecting some heart pieces, or laying down some um, seeds. So anyway, Sheik here is going to teach us the Prelude of Light. This, of course, warps us back to the Temple of Time, which is going to be super useful later on when we have to come back here real quick. So thanks to the wonderful Sheik, we now have a new song. There's only one more song we have to get, and that's going to be the one that will allow us to warp to the Spirit Temple. But we still have a whole other temple to go through first. Yes, that's right, the Shadow Temple. It's one of my favorite temples just because of the design of it and the boss. I love that boss, even though in this playthrough I don't do so well against him. It's still one of my favorite bosses to fight. So come up here, put the Master Sword back in the pedestal of time. Get a nice little cutscene here. Now, after you've seen this cutscene, you can just skip it. Hit the start button a few times, and you'll just skip this cutscene. And we are now a kid again. And it's time to head back over to Kakariko Village. Of course, I'm just going to walk there, because why not? I don't know why I didn't cut this out. Probably should have. <laughs> not much you're really missing out on. Just wandering in places. Yay. I hope everybody's having a good day today. I know there's not much to say right now because we're just making our way to the mini dungeon. We do have a nice chunk of change on us. Actually, there's going to mini. There's going to be a mini game that we're going to be doing before we go back to being an adult. It's uh, 
It's an interesting mini game. It can be difficult without the item that you get from the inside the well mini dungeon. Now you can do it if you're lucky, or if you know the pattern sets up. I'm not sure if the mini game has a pattern or not, but there's a super easy way of doing that mini game with the item. Also, we have about 50 um, slingshot bullets now because we got our full upgrades of that, and we have our I believe we have our second upgrade of the bombs. We don't have the final upgrade of the bombs. I'm not sure if I did that or not. I think 30 is the max you get, right? I don't know. So we're gonna head back over to the windmill because we have to play the Song of Storms inside there and mess up that guy one more time. Such a lovely guy, isn't he? He won't be mad at us at all. We'll forget about it in the seven years, right? Also, I love the fact that it's just question mark. So yeah, come over here, play the Song of Storms. And this, of course, will make the windmill sp speed up and drain the well. There's a little cutscene here, too. Um, like I said in a few earlier episodes, there is a piece of heart here that after you get the hook shot, you can uh, walk on over those little platforms and grab it. So anyway, Song of Storms, drain the well, and now it's time to actually enter the mini dungeon. Yeah, there's not a lot of mini dungeons in this game. Go around and around and around. What is going on? It's way too fast. Yeah, we just kind of rained on his parade. Get it? Rain in his parade. Yeah. I'm terrible. So after doing that, we're gonna hop down into the well. Taking some extra damage here, because why not? So yeah, you can only access this dungeon as a kid because it has a hole only kid Link can actually go through. Adult Link cannot fit through here. He's too big. So, yeah. When I first entered this temple as a kid, I had no idea how to get through this area because it's just a wall. As you find out, that wall is not real. Um, it's a fake wall. You can just kind of casually walk through it like it's nothing. I guess that skeleton gives you somewhat of a hint, but yeah. But anyway, walk through that wall, and now you're actually inside the mini dungeon itself. There's one thing that we have to grab here. Like I said, if you want to, you can grab a few Skulltulas, maybe some extra items laying around, but we're just going to be grabbing the item of the dungeon because that's all you really need out of here. So come on over here and you'll find a Triforce on the ground. This, of course, will tell you to come over here and play Zelda's Lullaby. This, of course, will drain the water. I thought we were done with draining water, but we were not. I promise this is like the last time we have to drain any sort of water. I promise. So we'll explore this place just a little bit. There's some bombs if we need them. Also, there's a giant floating skull everywhere. If you want to kill them. It's about one uh, seed. You basically have just to wait until uh, the green aura around him goes away. Come over here. Kick this chest open. I'm not sure what's in here. Maybe just rupees. Oh no, a recovery heart. Mm. Nothing fancy. So, let's see what's in here. Oh yes, this room. This room, you will find a small key and... Mummy Redead. Yes, these guys are somewhat annoying. And he almost humped my face, but I got away just in time. There's no humping with the face today. I got kind of angry at him because he almost humped my face. So he's gonna die for that. He's gonna die for your sins. Call me. So yeah, to open up these coffins, you actually have to break out your Deku sticks and lay up the torches that are next to them. There's about one coffin that you really have to light up. Um, all the other ones contain pieces. Which I highly recommend um, not having your wooden shield out during this part because they can burn it away. Like I said, it's really annoying that you have a wooden shield and that fire pieces show up a lot more frequently after the Godongo's Cavern. So anyway, open that up. I try to kill the keys as fast as possible, but I can't have these guys uh, 
wrecking my shield right now. Yeah, I think I actually switch over to the uh, Hylian shield. Yeah, just in case. Because he will burn that shield. Like I said, they go right for the fire. And they will... One hit will instantly incinerate your shield. Also, it's annoying to get in these little coffins. There you go, a small key for us. I'm not sure if I actually used a small key or not. Because I believe the room that has the item is not blocked by a small key block. So I think we're okay there. So yeah, this place is not too difficult. Um, you really don't need a map. Just kind of walk around and you'll find your way out of it. So just be careful because I believe there are a few spots that are... Uh, false, I guess you could say. And that... Yeah, see? One seed will kill it. Yeah, but they're false and will cause you to fall through a hole in the floor and you'll have to deal with some really annoying areas. So anyway, come back to the entrance here and drop down into this hole that we couldn't access before because it was filled with water. Also, watch out for the skull chiller there. He likes to say hi to you. That's what he's doing. He's not really trying to hit you. He's just like, hi. And he's so shy of you that he just turns around. We're his senpai. No. Okay. This guy. This is a mini boss. I hate this thing. Especially as a kid, because you really don't have the range that, say, Adult Link has. Now, this thing will only appear if the hand, one of the uh, all four hands are killed, or if the hand grabs you. Once the hand grabs you, you get a little camera cutaway, and it will show this big, gigantic blob thing chasing you. And its only attack is to bite you. It will lower its head and try to bite you. Um, its purpose is to use the hand... And once you hit him, he'll just like run away and go back on the ground. The hands don't do actually any damage to you. They just kind of hold you there, so big guy over here can come over and bite your face. It's a little terrifying, to be honest. That thing is just terrifying. Just shambling all the way towards you, and the room's locked, so you really can't leave. But of course, he's slow, and you hit him once, and he runs away like a little coward. Not much of a threat. I'm actually trying to see if I can catch the hand there with a spin attack, but it's not working. He's just not very friendly. As adult Link, you have a much easier time because you, you have the Bagoron Sword, and this range is ridiculous, especially the spin attack. And you can actually get a few hits if he cooperates with you. Yeah, so I'll take a bite out of you. He's annoying. I mean, you're a stupid idiot. Yeah. Standing next to a hand? Not a good idea. Take that advice from me. Also, you can't shoot at it with anything. You have to use your sword. And if you try to swing at him before his head's down, he will, uh... Just pull his head back up really fast, but... I did a really cool spin there and finished him off. And for killing that guy, we get a new item, which is called the Lens of Truth. The Lens of Truth being a useful item for the Shadow Temple and the Spirit Temple, and a really useful item for allowing us to actually get to the Spirit Temple itself. So yeah, we have the Lens of Truth. This, of course, will allow you to see items or objects that are not there before, and it also uses up magic. So you can't use an elemental arrow and have the Lens of Truth out. This item is going to become really handy in a few parts. Like I mentioned before, Getting to the Spirit Temple, it's mandatory. You have to have it. Um, through the Shadow Temple, you really don't need it if you know the layout of the dungeon itself. But it's really useful to have just in case. So we open up this chest here. Grab some bomb, because why not? And that's pretty much all we're going to be doing in the mini dungeon here. We're done. We got the one thing that we needed, and that, of course, was the Lens of Truth. Yeah, watch out when exiting this place, there's still a Skulltula there waiting for you. See? He's embarrassed to be in front of his senpai. That's right, bow to your senpai. Bow to your senpai. So we're gonna climb out of this wall because I'm sick of this place. 
And that's pretty much going to be the end of the episode. I just wanted to get through the bottom of the well because it was kind of a short mini dungeon. And you really don't need to do much here. Let's climb on out of this horrible, horrible place and never look back. Because we are finally done with that. But there will be one more time where we actually have to return to a child. And that's, of course, is going to be for the Spirit Temple. Anyway, guys, I am Vicious. Thank you for watching today's episode. And I will catch you all later. Have a great day and good night.